Greetings, welcome to this edition of Night Vision. We're back at Hanks High School with the latest information in this week of news. Bringing the kingdom together, this is Night Vision News. We begin our newscast with the state of our school with our student activities director, Ms. Avitia. We're currently gearing up for the end of course exam. We're trying to get all of our Knights to come back to campus to test on the 20th and the 22nd. So Ms. Tapia has been working uh, diligently calling uh, parents to make sure that our Knights are gonna come back to take the test. And we encourage every single one of our freshmen and sophomores to come on campus um, in the next two weeks to be able to test. The time has come for students to apply to the National Honor Society and we're asking for your help in identifying students you believe should be part of this prestigious organization. What you do is you uh, contact me uh, through email or come see me or whatever it is and I will link you to a Google Classroom where there will be an application that you will fill out. In that application, we'll ask you about your service projects that you've been part of. We'll ask you about the leadership parts that you've been part of. We'll also, um, once you've completed that application, I'll also um, look up your GPA from the school. I'll look up your academic history. And I will ask your teachers to um, rate your abilities of leadership and character in the classroom. The whole process, um, well, the applications are going to be due at the end of April, and the rest of the process will take place during May. Uh, applicants who are accepted or not will hear back probably in mid to late May. Students who wish to join the National Honor Society should meet the following criteria. Be a sophomore, junior, or senior. Have completed at least one full year of enrollment at Hanks. Strive for academic excellence as shown by a GPA above a 90 have leadership experience, participate in service activities, have a clean disciplinary record, and have an excellent school attendance record. The link to the NHS candidates website is in the description of this video. The due date for applications this year is April 30th. The library has been rolling to the cafeteria during both lunches to play Lotaria with students on Mondays. There has been a good response from our students and we'd like to take it to the next level. So make sure to join us every Monday during your lunch in the cafeteria for a chance to win some prizes and have some fun. We use traditional Loteria. I created a quarantine Loteria and I'm in the process of creating other Loterias uh, for our students to play during lunch. So right now we have on average about 15 to 20 people that can play at a time and the winners basically get candy. So it's a little distraction for the students during lunch um, almost every Monday. Students are on the computer all day so instead of giving them, you know, their phones or their Chromebooks to continue distracting themselves during lunch, we wanted to offer something different um, at least once a week. We have the honor of having our support person of the year, Miss Lowry, placed in the top five finalists in the district. She will now be competing for the district title. During our last staff meeting, Miss Lowry was recognized for this achievement, as well as Miss Delk, our teacher of the year. Um, well, it was a big surprise. I w I'm very honored to be uh, considered one of the finalists. Just being nominated in general and getting the support employee um, was a, a big honor as well. So being finalist is just very exciting and I'm proud to represent Hanks um, as one of the support employees for the district. Do you know what the GO Center is? We have our own fully staffed GO Center here on campus. It serves as a bridge to everything that is college related, from getting information on how to apply for financial aid to getting admitted to the college of your choice. The GO Center is, is um, a place where any student from 9th grade to 12th grade can stop by and start looking into anything that has to do with college. Uh, we are a district that likes to have our students uh, get a, a four-year college or a two-year college uh, degree so uh, we are part of of making that happen so basically the go center helps you with anything that has to do with college applying for college um, scholarships financial aid um, anything anything that that the student has questions about college they can come here and we can help them with that on the same note, the Destination UTEP event will take place virtually 
from April 26th to April 30th. This event is for students who have already been admitted to UTEP and are now ready to pick their courses for the fall semester. So it is of utmost importance that you attend this event on your assigned day. Basically, UTEP is going to have a week event, and the week event for us at Hanks will be from April 26th all the way to April 30th. Every day of the week is a different college, so depending on the college, um, on, depending on the major that, that the student chose when they apply to UTEP, that's the, the day that they're going to be attending the virtual destination UTEP. Don't forget to visit Ms. Aguirre at the GO Center in room 104 and have all your college-related questions answered today. And now we'll continue with the Associated Press News Minute. This is AP News Minute. Demonstrations were held outside the Brooklyn Center, Minnesota Police Station for a fourth straight night following the shooting death of Dante Wright. Kim Potter, a white former police officer, is charged with second-degree manslaughter. The Biden administration is preparing to announce sanctions against Russia. Senior administration officials say they're in response to a massive Russian hacking campaign and election interference. The U.S. Coast Guard says it has covered an area bigger than Rhode Island as it searches for up to a dozen people missing off the Louisiana coast. At least six people were rescued and one body found since an offshore oil field vessel capsized during a storm on Tuesday. And California Governor Gavin Newsom says it's time for all schools in the state to reopen. Newsom says there are no state or health barriers to stop children from going back to class. Mike Hemp in the Associated Press with AP News Minute. It is now time to hear our sports updates from our very own coaches. Hey, um, after coming off a, a season being suspended last year because of COVID, um, you know, we're just we're just uh, fortunate that, that we are able to even play a season. And so the kids are come out and they're ready to go, uh, that type of thing. So we've, we've um, started hot and we've, we've stayed hot and we're working on getting better every day. Yeah, they're, they're just excited to keep competing. And of course, our goals are to, to, to go advance far into the state playoffs if, and ultimately to get to that state tournament in Austin, Texas. You know, it's a combination of these kids putting in the work in the off season because uh, most of all these kids play, even though COVID hit our season last year. So a lot of these kids were still playing in the summer and the in the fall throughout until the season started. So that helped to keep so their keep their skills um, sharp, and then they just have come together really well as a group and a team. I mean, they support each other, they pull for each other, and team chemistry is huge. That's something that. Uh, there's no magic potion for it. It's just something that the kids kind of develop through the course of, um, and with, with COVID, it's even bigger to have that chemistry when we're on the field together. Um, tonight, I think you can expect the kids to come out with a lot of uh, energy and emotion. Uh, the kids are excited. Uh, they, they love their seniors, and I think they're excited to play for them um, and, and go out with a bang for the seniors. So I anticipate um, you know, staying undefeated in districts and, and um, pushing us forward into the playoffs. It is time for Nightcasted. Broadcasting student D'Angelo Perez presents our Nightcasted Person of the Week, our very own guitar teacher, Mr. Mata. Roll tape. Welcome, Knights. Today, our Nightcasted Person is none other than Mr. Mata the guitar teacher and director for Hanks High School. Mr. Mata, having a wide history of music before becoming the director of the Hanks Knights guitar program, was there from the start, watching how the guitar program skyrocketed in a matter of a few years. I started playing guitar at a really young age, at around eight. My dad bought a guitar and uh, started taking like, like evening guitar lessons, like adult guitar lessons. And I would, he'd come home with his guitar after he'd been working all day and then he took, he'd, and he took his uh, his, uh, his, his uh, guitar lesson, he'd come home and it'd be late and I'd, you know, I'd just, you know, just jump on him, you know, just show me everything, like, because he would come home and he was playing songs by the Beatles, you know, we, and we, lo we love the Beatles in my house. So I went to school for instrumental music education. I actually started my career as a band director. I was an assistant band director and then head band director at Isleta High School. And I was at Isleta High School for eight years. While I was there, 
We started a guitar program and it grew from being one class to two and then before you know it, by the time I, I over eight years, by the time I left East Lida, it was about 150 and it was a very popular elective. After his time at East Lida High School, Mr. Mata eventually made his way to Hinks High School, the Kingdom of Champions. After his transition of being guitar director, he saw how his students excelled in class as well as in competition. Um, I came here to Hanks High School uh, in 2008 and uh, just really enjoyed uh, the transition of just being able to, to teach guitar all day and uh, the program over the years is, it's grown and we've, we've had uh, a success with many many students doing well at, uh, at contests and, and, uh, and doing really well at performances here on campus and, and in competitions. Mr. Mata hopes to see more knights join the guitar program, whether it be to learn classical rock or any kind of music. Uh, so anyone who's interested in guitar, if you have a, if you have a love for, for any type of music really, if it's classical, if it's rock and roll, if you, if you play guitar a little bit already and you want to get better, I'd love to meet you, I'd love to have you in the guitar program. And, and hopefully, um, if, you, if you have that interest, we'd love to see you in the classroom. And you're all invited. We of course hope to see more knights join the guitar program here at the Kingdom of Champions. This is D'Angelo Perez with Night Vision, Night Casted. And that ends our edition of Night Vision Home Edition here at the Kingdom of Champions. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the address on your screen and follow our Instagram at nightvisionhhs. Continue to watch your attendance. We have less than 40 days until the end of this academic year. Be online, on time, and on point. That's all for today, Knights. Have a great weekend. This year, TEA has not waived the uh, requirements for EOC testing, so it is very important that all of our students in person and online learners come to campus on their scheduled day to take their STAR EOC. There are five EOCs required for graduation, and we highly believe that it's important for the kids to take the test during the school year that they're receiving the instruction because uh, it does say that we do have other opportunities in summer and December. Those will have a result, so we're gonna concentrate on our retesters, and the more they wait, they're not gonna be receiving that instruction anymore, and then kids will just have to try to prepare on their own. All students and adults are gonna undergo temperature checks, uh, screenings, and then at that point, we'll let them know what is their testing room, and we're gonna have uh, students helping out to be courtesies and letting students know where their testing classroom is. English one and English two, we will be providing lunch in between. It is a five hour test. Uh, we ask all students to report to campus by 8.15. Within those five hour tests, we will be stopping for a 30 minute lunch break. And so all students will walk down to the cafeteria. We have the process of a grab and go. Students will walk to the cafeteria, grab their lunch, a good time to stretch out their legs, come back into the classrooms, eat. Again, it is all small group testing. We will keep the dividers up. Students may have their quick lunch break and then we'll resume testing. Testing should be coming to an end by about 2.45. So students will be released between 2.45 and 3 p.m. We're gonna be testing in classrooms. So it's gonna be all small group settings. We'll have a range between 10 to 15 students at most per classroom. We will be keeping all the dividers up. Uh, we'll be providing brand new pencils to all students. The rooms are being constantly uh, sanitized by our custodians. They do an awesome job of having the classrooms prepared for us. Students are required to come into campus wearing their mask. Uh, they must bring in their school-issued Chromebook and charger. If they have issues with their Chromebook or need a replacement or never checked one out, please, please, please contact our school library. 
Uh, the ladies are there waiting to help you if, if you need any help with that. Uh, they must also bring in a water bottle. Our water fountains are shut down. You are allowed to refill the water bottle after it's emptied out, but you can't use the actual water fountain. We do recommend you bring in a snack. It's going to be a long day of testing. And then you are allowed to bring in your device. Just know that your personal belongings will be put to the side in a designated area in your classroom. There will be four entrance points for students to come in through. The main entrance, uh, Knight's Quarter, Fine Arts, and the 300 hallway, which is a south entrance across from the fast food restaurants. That way it helps alleviate uh, congestions building up. Just know that your child's safety is our number one priority. We are following all COVID guidelines, all of our spacing. We are practicing the social distancing of everybody maintaining six feet apart within the classrooms. The desks are already set six feet apart. We are encouraging, we are, it is mandatory for every individual to be wearing their mask at all times, covering their mouth and their nose. And we will be using the dividers during testing time. All rooms are sanitized and all students will be receiving a brand new pencil. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me at ctapia11 at yisd.net or you can call me at 434-5230. I will answer all of your questions and your concerns.